we don't need to be mass medicated, right? right? Okay, so let me go on with my talk. Um, first of all, you need to know that there's an, an, an enormous amount of power in each individual one of you. All of us have tremendous power, and collectively, we're unbeatable. It doesn't matter how small the group is, you can ultimately, if you stick to your goals, make it, okay? Um, the power of individuals, I'll, I'll point out a few people you're familiar with, but there's many, many more, but we don't have all the time to discuss them all. Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and in the environmental field, people like Rachel Carson, you know, who single-handedly, by writing her book, uh, Silent Spring, had DDT removed off the market. Now, DDT isn't gone, by the way. We still produce it, sell it to third world countries, they put it on the crops, and then send it back to us. So, just understand that. Erin Brockovich, you all know about Erin Brockovich? She took on the Pacific Gas and Electric in California and won against great odds. Now, there's a company that has a lot of money, obviously, but she still won. She's still carrying on her fight against environmental people who are destroying the environment. All these great people and many others have contributed tremendously to humanity. And it seems that, that tenacity and being on the side of truth are the attributes that guarantee success on many of these issues. Now, they asked me to talk, and I'll probably take about 10 to 12 minutes to give you this dissertation. And my experience is I've been in water treatment, solar development, geothermal, uh, promoting LED lighting to cut back on things like the nuclear power plants that we have in Ontario. Very big issue, I'd love to talk to you about that. But today we'll try to focus on the water fluoridation. Personally, I consider fluoridation of our water supply mass medication. And without, it's not with prior consent. They're just medicating us without us having any input into it. Right. And it forces each citizen to either spend money to get the fluoride out of the water, combined with a lot of other contaminants, or have to drink it. Now recently there's been a study that suggests that fluoride when mixed with aluminum is even worse, a worse hazard. And a lot of people use aluminum cookware, correct? So it's not a good idea to use fluoridated water, especially if you're using aluminum cookware. You can ask, you know, about mass medication. Go to any pharmacy. You guys can hear okay? Go to any pharmacy and ask the pharmacist if there's one substance in that pharmacy that you could prescribe it to everybody, regardless of age, and guarantee its safety. And I guarantee you, they'll laugh you out of the store. There's no substance on the planet that you could prescribe to everybody, regardless of age or condition, and guarantee that there's safety in it. Now, before we get into why it's not a good idea, uh, no, I'd rather do this. So, before, before we get into why fluoride is not a good idea, I want to talk about my personal experience over the 75 years of experience I've had on this planet. And uh, if I was a few years older, I would have probably been considered a conspiracy theorist because I would have belonged to the wrong Earth Society. Got it? <laughs> we have witnessed a number of issues, a number of holy grails that have fallen and proven for the fraud they really are. And I'll just recite a few of these that I've seen happen in my 75 years of experience on this planet. We witnessed, for instance, the tobacco industry. They used to use in the 1960s and 70s medical doctors talking from their offices with a cigarette in their, in their mouth, suggesting that if you smoke cigarettes, you would eliminate stress, you would be healthier, you would, uh, you would eliminate things like cancer and heart disease from your life. The whole thing was backwards. It was totally opposite. And they got away with that for 50 to 60 years. And some people still smoke today. Now, DDT is another thing. We just talked about DDT a few moments ago. In about the same era, they used to spray, and I've got videos of this, children while eating their lunch at school with DDT to prove how safe that substance was. You recall that? That's what they used to do. Well, I'm sure nobody has. I'm sure nobody has because they don't follow these things. And many of these substances are very insidious. Heart disease doesn't happen overnight. It takes 20 to 30 years to develop cancer or heart disease or any of these chronic diseases. Another one was PCBs. PCBs was used everywhere in motors and in transformers. But now it's been disallowed because it's cancer causing, right? Asbestos was another one. Asbestos is used to insulate hot water or hot, hot pipes, right? 
and used for installation in homes and was also used in the infrastructure of our water supply. Okay? And we know asbestos is very harmful. I have a personal experience with my brother-in-law. He used to work for John's Mansville. And he used to work the night shift most of the time, and he used to brag about how nice it was to lay on the backs of asbestos and nap at night while he was on his ship. He died a terrible death that took about six months of horrendous pain. Lit. Lit just received a little bit of notoriety in the star on the front page just about a week or two ago, talking about how lead is now found in many communities in Toronto as a result of lead pipes. Mostly they are galvanized pipes with lead in them. Now, remember, if your house was built, or where you're living was built prior to 10 years ago, all the copper pipes have lead solder on them. So it's hard to get away from lead. Lead is one of those substances that has the ability to go through the blood brain barrier, the same as mercury and chloride. Now, the other thing that we've all heard about is biphenols A, which is BPA in plastics, right? None of us can get away from that. We all have it in our blood. And when you be, if you test it, you'll find 100% of the population has it in their blood. Now, it's been taken out of, it's been ruled now, not able to put it into things like baby bottles. All right? But it's still in plastic water bottles, it's in cans, it's in plastic bottles. It's not in the single-use bottles. In what? It's not in the single-use bottles. You sure? Yes, I am. Well, okay. I can tell you this as well. From my experience, the substance they used in order to replace the BPA I guarantee you will be found later to be probably as bad, if not worse, because it's still a petrol chemical. When you guys drink bottled water, even the 500 milliliter bottle, a quarter of that bottle was petrol chemicals. That's what it took to make that bottle. And it took a whole bottle of water to make the bottle. Plus, it has to be transported, so more fuel is required to do that. So by drinking bottled water, you're subsidizing the petrol chemical industry. Is that something you really want to do? We, we have to have a good tap water for everybody, okay, which is we're talking, free. We're talking about that, okay? So we talked about biphenyls. Now, I tried to make a list of some of the drugs that have been withdrawn, okay, off the market. And when I looked the list up, I did a lot of research. I'm telling you, till 1 o'clock this morning, I was still doing this. And I found that from 1964 to 2011, that's a period of, what, 36, 36, 47 years, there were 160 drugs which were released on the market and recalled because of the damage they were creating. Okay? We today are exposed to 80,000 chemicals. Since the Second World War, which ended in 1946, we, there have been 80,000 chemicals introduced in our environment, all of which have been regulated by the regulatory bodies as being safe to us, right? So can you believe them when they insist fluoridation is safe or is there for our benefit? So let's address some of these guidelines because a lot of this stuff is based on guidelines that are set by the regulatory bodies, right? So one of my passions is the nuclear industry. I despise the nuclear industry with passion because I have grandchildren. Out of 22 reactors in Canada, 20 of them are right here in Ontario. And I know what they're going to do. They're going to wait until they have an accident and walk away from it, just like it happened in Fukushima. Okay? It's going to take 40 years to clean up Fukushima, and it's already cost $40 billion. Not to Tepco, but to the Japanese government. Why they will walk away from it? Because they can't. Because they don't have any money. They just declare bankruptcy and walk away. But in the meantime, they made all this money. Exactly. Okay? In Pay attention, people. <laughs> Lake Ontario is the water supply, the drinking water supply for millions of people, both on this side of the border and in the U.S., right? So let's talk a little bit about the nuclear industry and how it affects Lake Ontario. The nuclear industry, both Pickering and Darlington, draw a million gallons a minute out of the lake for cooling purposes. A million gallons a minute. Can you imagine that? Then they rotate it through the plant to cool it and then put it back into Lake Ontario, warmer. What do you think that does to the ecology of the lake? Don't even talk about all the, the uh, waterfowl and the, all the water, you know, the, the fish and so on and the, and the small eggs that are sucked in into these plants and never never to return alive, right? But this now, doesn't have actual traces of, of uh, uh, radiation yeah, or something gonna like that? Yeah, we're going to talk about That's what we're getting I, to. I think. Yeah, that's what we're getting to. So when they recirculate the water and it comes back into Lake Ontario, it has tritium in it. 
Now, tritium is a radioactive isotope. It is in our drinking water. And unfortunately, even being a water treatment professional, I cannot guarantee you can get it out. You can get tritium out of the water. It mimics the water molecule. It's a lot like hydrogen in the water. So, in Canada, the nuclear industry is allowed to dump as much as 7,000 bicarols per liter of tritium in the water supply. You got that? 7,000 bicarols per liter. For what time? Now, anytime, anytime they dump, it, your drinking water could have as many as 7,000 bicarols per liter. Per liter. Okay? In most of Europe, it's 100 bicarols per liter. In California, they're dropping it down to 15 bicarols per liter. Are we that much hardier than the people in Europe? We are lazy or ignorant? We're ignorant, I think. Also. <laughs> okay. People don't be ignorant, please. Okay, now, the incident in Japan, for instance, at Fukushima, has been dumping radioactive substances at a rate of 300 tons a day into the Pacific Ocean, thus making the Pacific Ocean somewhat radioactive, right? And so fish in it. Now, in Japan, if you have more than 100 picarols per kilogram, of cesium in the fish, you cannot sell it and eat it in Japan. You know what the level is here? 1,000 bicarols per kilogram, which means the Japanese can send and export fish to us and we can eat it because it's regulated to be safe at 10 times the level of cesium that they can eat themselves. So how, how much can you trust our regulator bodies, right? When you, when you hear about this. Now, as far as fluoride is concerned, I became aware of it when my daughter started to show some modeling on her teeth. And when I did some investigation, I found out it was dental fluorosis. And I immediately went out and bought a reverse osmosis system because I discovered that's the way to get fluoride out of the water, plus a lot of other chemicals and inorganic substances. And today she has fantastic teeth, but it's taken many years and tons of money to get it there. Okay? Now, there are 46 studies that have investigated the relationship between fluoride and human intelligence, and 31 studies that have investigated fluoride and learning and memory in animals. Okay, 46 human and 31 studies for animals. Of the investigations, 39 of the 46 human studies have found that fluoride exposure lowers IQ, and 29 out of the 31 animal studies have found that fluoride impacts the learning and memory capacity of animals. The human study involved 1,100 children and provided evidence that fluoride exposure during formative years can damage a child's development, developing brain. There is some evidence that fluoride was used during the Second World War to keep prisoners passive and less rebellious. Now, I cannot guarantee that Listen was the case. Listen to this, people. Okay? Say it again, please, please. Please say there it is, again. There is, she wants me to say it again. Please. There is some evidence that in the Second World War, fluoride in higher dosages was used to keep the prisoners passive and less piece? rebellious. Yes. Okay, in a hard You needed to hear that. I, 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 you know, this very political stuff, and I'm really careful about what I say because yeah, I don't want anything coming back. All right? I'm a professional, I'm in the industry of water treatment, and I, I need to keep everything clean. Okay, in a Harvard study released July 25th of 2012, of children up to age 14, this is a study done by uh, one at Harvard University, and Philippe Grandjean and his colleagues studied 8,000 children and found exposure to fluoride lowered IQ by as much as 7 IQ points as a result of drinking fluorinated water. They place fluoride in the same category as lead and mercury and other poisons that cause chemical brain drain, which means it has the ability to get through the blood-brain barrier and affect our thinking and our actions. So it's a it's a it's a new study. We didn't know that before, so we, we, we should do something. Let me about let me it tell now, you some yeah, more right? studies. Health Canada guidelines of 2010 reviewed the health risk associated with fluoride in drinking water and concluded that the major risk is dental fluorosis. They found no association with other diseases. Of course you wouldn't, because none of it happens overnight. It's a long-term situation, like cancer and heart disease, and any of these chronic diseases. They take 20 to 30 years to develop. 
Okay? Now, what they have done is they set the drinking water standard for fluoride at 1.5 parts per million. Milligrams per liter is what's called. <clears throat> so 1.5 parts per million of water could be fluoride. Okay? Now, they also agree that fluoride comes from other sources, such as your food and your beverages and dental products, such as toothpaste. Do you guys know that in a regular tube of toothpaste, there's 30 parts per million of fluoride in it, there's fluoride in the toothpaste? That's a lethal dose for a small child if they consume that. They suggest that if the child consumes more than a pea, swallows more than a pea-sized amount, which is usually what you put on a toothpaste, toothbrush, right? You need to take them to an emergency. Now, here's some of the serious challenges with fluoride. Fluoride blocks the uptake of iodine in the body and affects the thyroid function. Now, iodine is so important that they found that 85% of the world's population is deficient in it. You need, you need, oh, magnesium, yeah. As a matter of fact, if uh, women took uh, even three Brazil nuts a day, 80% of breast cancer would be alleviated. 80%. But it also causes depression. Of course. This causes well, depression. You see this mark Look right how here? much depressed people we have. How many? You Why do anything you think? that affects the brain, obviously, is going to cause things like that, right? This is uh, iodine. That's Lugo's solution, which I put on here this morning to see how long it took to absorb into my skin. Now, you need, if you do this, you take a drop and just put it there. If it absorbs sooner than five hours, you are deficient in iodine. I guarantee you, most of you are deficient in iodine. Iodine is very important because it supports the thyroid. And today, with all the radioactivity from Fukushima and our own nuclear reactors, we need our thyroid to function well. Is this the topical iodine that you get Well, no, don't use that. Go to the Smith's Pharmacy on Young Street and uh, pick up the glucose solution. Glucose? Glucose. Yeah, L-U-G-U-O-L-S, I believe it's called. Okay? And it recommends only two drops. I take up to ten. No different than vitamin D. How, much, how many of you here consume vitamin D, especially when it's not like today? You do, you do, you do. Good, a few of you do. How many I use of vitamin D do you consume a day? Depends. Sometimes uh, 2,000. 2,000? Uh, 2,000. Again, exactly what I do. Now, I spent a month and a half and just came back recently from the Philippines. I didn't take vitamin D with me because you don't need it in the Philippines. You're in the sun all the time. And it's not covered by chemtrails like this is today. This, yeah. Is this pure chemtrails? That's pure chemtrails. Pure chemtrails. Oh, okay. Every one of those are chemtrails. Pure chemtrails. Okay, that's another issue I'd love to discuss with you. Now, fluoride is a discard, just so you know, I think most of you already know that fluoride is a byproduct of the aluminum and the fertilizer industry, yeah. okay? And they sold it to municipalities in order to get rid of it because it was polluting the environment. It's a byproduct. No different, by the way, than gasoline in the oil industry. Another issue. And the fluoride promoters have utilized all seven propaganda techniques identified by the Institute for Propaganda Analysis. They use name-calling, littering generalities, transfer, testimonials, plain folks, and stacking and bandwagon. Now, all these are tactics they, that most of these industries, like Monsanto and people like that do, including, by the way, the tobacco industry for over 50 years. Exactly the same techniques, the same principles apply. Absolutely, they need to, to make money on something exactly. bad. <laughs> so, what they do is they use the same mantra. Anytime you ask any authority about fluoride, they use exactly the same words, and I think you can even remember it. It is well known that fluoride prevents cavities. But they don't have any studies to prove it. There's none. There's a lot to prove it doesn't, except maybe if you apply it topically, but none, no studies that really prove that it really works. Now, a study compiled by the British Fluoridation Society in November of 2012 puts the number of people drinking fluoridated water worldwide at 369,656,000. You got that? 369 million. Of that, 194 million plus are in the United States. In the U.S., 64% of Americans drink fluoridated water. Not the same in the rest of the world. 
In Canada, it's only 14,260,000, which represents 44%. Argentina, mostly here. Mostly in Ontario. Yeah. Argentina only coordinates 19% of their population. Korea, South Korea only 6% use fluoridated water. Now, contrary to that, you got Singapore and Hong Kong that fluoridate 100% of the water, and only 3% of people living in Western Europe drink fluoridated water. 3%. They're pretty smart, these people in Europe, aren't they? Exactly. When we check closer to home, Ontario is the country's heaviest user of fluoride, while Quebec uses practically nothing. There's virtually nobody in Quebec drinking fluoridated water. But they drink water. So, water without Ionized. fluoride. Ionized. No. In a study compiled by Statistics Canada, again, from 2007 to 2009, the difference between the two provinces in children 6 to 19 years of age was less than one half cavity per child. What a hell of a price to pay, you know, for that little benefit when a lot of other things could affect you when you consume chloride. Now, we must not accept, I'm coming down to a wind up now, and I'll take questions if you like, okay? We must not accept the principles of mass medication without prior consent, which together with other born contaminants create a health risk which is totally unnecessary. I would be remiss as a water quality professional if I did not discuss ways of rendering the water safe for drinking and bathing, okay? The technologies I highly recommend are reverse osmosis for drinking water combined with activated carbon because reverse osmosis will remove virtually all inorganic substances, including, by the way, inorganic minerals, which are of no benefit to your body, with the exception that they will contribute to things like kidney stones, hardening of the arteries, and calcification of the joints. I've been at this for 40 years. I've never drank any other water but RO, and I'm 75 and in very good health, considering my genetics. My family's full of cancer. My dad died at 48 from heart disease. My blood pressure is 112 over 70. Okay, argue with that. And I don't, all I do with my water is I might add some cell food, because even though I eat organic, I'm vegan, so I don't get a lot of stuff, you know, from meats and things like that. So I use some cell food in my water, and I will add pink salt, which is Himalayan mine salt, which is very beneficial for your electrolytes. It's the only salt you consume. No Sorry, other salt is pink salt. It's Himalayan salt. Himalayan, 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 Himalayan salt. rock salt. And it's mine. It's mine from an old sea in the Himalayas. Okay, as far as um, another technology is distillation, but I only recommend that on well water situations where you cannot afford better technology. Because distillation is a process where you boil water and collect the steam, which more or less destroys the water molecule. With reverse osmosis, you're putting water to a semi-permeable membrane that removes substances that are down to one ten thousandth of a micron. Your hair is 50 microns thick, and I said one ten thousandth of a micron. So it's very effective in removing virtually everything that's an inorganic out of the water supply. How about okay? into the shower? We'll talk about that next. Okay, so that's one, and it's always combined with activated carbon. You will look up on in the internet and find reverse osmosis will not remove chemicals. No, reverse osmosis membranes will not remove chemicals. They're not intended to do that. So you need activated carbon before and after reverse osmosis, and every system on the market comes with both. Okay, so you're going to so remove every system on the market that has a reverse osmosis has, has activated carbon before and after. Toronto, I would recommend a four-stage system. Okay, one before, a carbon before with a sediment filter, a reverse osmosis membrane, and then two carbons, one of which is denser than the other, to remove volatile organic compounds that might get through the rest of the system. All right? Now, the very best system on the market, if you want my expertise, is called the Kinetico K5DX. Look it up. Kinetico produces the best products in water treatment. Kinetico K5DX. And you look it up, it's number one by Consumers Report. It has some fantastic features. Not only does it produce more water, faster water, it also shuts down if you don't change the filters on time. In my 30 years of experience, I can guarantee you, half of the people that purchase units through me have never changed the filters on time. Because they wait until the flow rate stops, which means the contaminants have built up to such an extent, they're now blocking the water. 
and then they change the filter. Well, by that time, it's, little, it's no different than the Brita, waiting until the Brita doesn't pour water to it. So, as you asked about showers, now, you have fluoride and chlorine, which are real concern in the shower and some other chemicals. The best way to remove it is through water softening combined with an activated carbon system. And again, Kinetico and other manufacturers have those systems that can apply to the whole house. Uh, no, the, the one thing about the Kinetico water softeners and dechlorinators, they don't need any valves with electricity. They work strictly by water flow. So they're more efficient. They save about 70% uh, of the salt and 70% of the water. And if you have a family of four or more, you're already paying for soft water, you're already paying for reverse osmosis system, but you're not getting the benefits. So you can cut back on a lot of the chemicals that you use, the harsh chemicals for cleaning your salt and your household and your clothing, if you have soft water in your home, and you will benefit tremendously from it as far as your hair, your skin, and your outlook on life as far as you know, drinking clean water without the fluoride, obviously. So if you don't, what can we do actually? If you don't have it, to make the, the politicians to make our uh, keep talking stuff. about it. become educated and tell them that yeah. you don't want it anymore. Okay, but we can yeah. demand something. Uh, you can instead. demand anything from politicians. Most yeah, of the time, they won't instead, act. But what we can demand something instead of fluoride. Well, there's nothing else. You don't need fluoride in the water. It doesn't do any good at all. It only does harm. There's find no a petition online. Fire. There's a petition it's online and Fluoride right. Toronto. We're up to uh, 4,200 signatures. Listen to the gentleman. He's telling me what to do. Help us get to five to 10,000. We're going to be emailing every single councillor in Toronto again and again and again. Okay. Make and that's sure what we're going to do. And if everybody here does it, and if everybody here emails their councillor and says, I want a response, they have to respond to you. That's their job. Okay, make sure that you write your name down with your email address so you can receive this information. There's all kinds of lists here. <laughs> now, if you want, you were asking about in the shower. If For those who live in the condos or apartments, you cannot have a whole house system, obviously, because you don't have control over your complete water supply. Now, if you live in a condo where you have a hot water tank, then it's no problem. You can have a whole house system. But for those who do not, then I would recommend a shower filter, which you can buy for about $50, and it will remove chlorine and some of the fluoride. Thank you. Okay, so at least you're not baiting yourself. With chlorine, you ingest more chlorine when you take in a shower than when you drink in the water. Now, chlorine is necessary in the water, by the way, because if you didn't have it, you could wind up with a disease, because chlorine kills bacteria. The thing is, you need to get it out before you drink it. This is why a lot of people go to bottled water. Now, let me tell you something about bottled water. Some of you people were talking to me earlier. When you buy bottled water, you are contributing to the disaster in the environment. You know, in the Pacific, there are two islands that are composed mostly of those plastic bottles and styrofoam that now are larger than the state of Texas each. Okay? And the fish life in there, which we ultimately consume, is now eating that plastic when it breaks down. So it's not a good idea to drink bottled water. One reason. Number two, I told you it takes as much as a quarter of a bottle of petrochemicals to make that bottle. Right? And then a bottle of water just to manufacture the bottle itself. And then you fill it up with water and have to transport it, more petrochemicals, right? Needed to do that. And you know it costs them about six cents to make that bottle. What do you pay for it? And the worst one to buy, and I, I don't care if somebody litigates against me on this, is Nestle. I despise yeah. the Nestle company Airlines. as much as I despise Monsanto. And I'll tell you why. Yes. They are trying to monopolize all the water on the planet. Yep. They go to third world countries and dam up rivers and then sell water downstream to the poor natives who have, up for millennium, been able to use those rivers for their water supply. If you so, have a low budget, okay, and live in a condo where you cannot install an under-the-counter reverse osmosis system, yes. there is a unit about this long that you can put in the fridge, so about this diameter and about that long, and it's called the uh, water maker, the Nimbus water maker, and it sells for about $200, okay? I have a list here of people who are interested in following up with water treatment, and if you leave your name, your phone number, and your email address, I'll gladly send you all kinds of information. Totally unbiased, I don't care who you buy from, I prefer you buy from me, but um, it's up to you. Uh, any questions? I have a, um, in terms of
distillation of water? Yes. Um, how does that, I understood that fluoride has a boiling point of 1600 degrees Celsius or so, and water, one, yeah, so how Fluor does, Fluoride will be eliminated uh, if you use distilled water. You distill water. It will, yeah. You will, you will get rid of it. So it's not the vapor? Yeah, because you're only containing, it's, it's an inorganic, so it's not going to go up to the vapor. It will remain in the kettle. The same as your inorganic substance. That's why with the distiller you have to clean it, right? Because it has all kinds of residue on the bottom. Any other questions? Go ahead. Do chemtrails um, influence our water? Of course, everything that's, everything that's, well, let me tell you something about pesticides before I get into chemtrails. Only one tenth of one percent of all the pesticides that are sprayed all over the planet ever land on the targeted pest or whatever. Okay? Only one ten to one percent. The rest of it is in our environment. I buy only organic food and have for 40 years. I cannot guarantee you that it's totally safe. Someone asked me how do you, you know, what do you do to make sure that what you're consuming is okay? I use a system where my body will tell, will tell me what to do by holding the substance to my thymus gland. Okay, I'd rather do it this way. Holding the substance to my thymus gland, and if my body rolls forward, make sure all the electronics are off your body when you do this. If my body rolls forward, it's saying yes. If my body rolls back, it's saying no. I tested 30 supplements this morning. I only needed four. And they're different from the ones I needed yesterday. Because every day, your requirements change. They, many people take the same supplements day after day after day, and it's counterproductive. And some supplements will more or less neutralize the effect of others. So you have to have a subjective way of testing yourself, and this is probably the simplest one to use. But, caveat on that, if you are a drug addict, if you are an alcoholic, if you smoke, and if you eat a junk food diet, don't do it. Because your body will not respond accurately. You have to get marijuana? on... Sorry? What about marijuana? Well, I don't think marijuana is... That, I'm not, I didn't mean that as being a drug addict. Marijuana is very beneficial. <laughs> To some even diseases today, they're suggesting it could cure cancer. But you've got to be very careful about saying cure. But it can alleviate the symptoms of cancer. How about that? Um, so yeah, yeah marijuana. We are talking I'm to the public, not amongst ourselves. We are. We all know about this. We should be educating people out there. Well, I not all of us know, and campus. we're all learning. And when we do, well, guys, then we can spread the word. Yeah, we're just wrapping it up. We're just about wrapping it up. We're educating, the, up. We're educating we're the educated, not. making them stronger. Yes, we're, we're going to wrap this up. We're wrapping up in two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Um, you asked about chemtrails. Chemtrails are supposedly being done to fend off global warming, which is a farce. Uh, it's geoengineering, and it's used. Uh, the, what they do in, with it is they put aluminum, barium, and thonium, from what I understand. Now, all that's going to wind up in our soils and our water supply, so it's in there, obviously, right? And it's in our air, breathing it in. I don't, I don't know what else to say except. Those people who are supposed to be protecting us aren't doing a hell of a job. Okay? So we need to take responsibility for ourselves. And remember what I said earlier, you have a lot of power on your own. But when you get together collectively, you are unbeatable. I'll give you a little saying, I believe Maxwell stated it. He said 5% of the people think. Five, you can count yourself amongst those five percent. Five percent think they think, and ninety percent would rather die than think. So Bravo. you're surrounded. You know what? I think it's so true. You're surrounded by at least nine out of ten people who don't want to do any thinking. So they elect the kind of people you find in this building, in Queens Park, and in Ottawa to run their lives, and they're not doing a good job, are they? Okay. Yep. So isn't it about time we started doing things on our own? Learning, become educated, spread the word. Okay? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Update all your friends, guys. Update. Okay, I'm at an anti-fluoride rally in Toronto. That was a hell of a speech made, and uh, hopefully you all learned something from it.